So back in the day when I first started out playing chess, I didn't really study the openings. What I used to do is create model games like this and laminate them and everything, like different variations, and then carry them around in my bag. You know, what a weirdo, right? But if I was uh, doing this today, and obviously this is before I discovered that you could have a chess database on your phone in your pocket with millions of games in, it wasn't taking up any space. But anyway, so if I was doing this today and I was looking at a... Uh, doing this for like a Royal Lopez, a standard Royal Lopez when you're playing D4. This is the sort of model game I'd probably choose, actually. It's a really, really nice game. And in this game, Fisher tries a kingside attack. That doesn't work. It switches to a queenside attack, and that does work. So, yes, yeah, so let's have a look. So, uh, we go into a Royal Lopez. I'm just going to flick through the opening fairly quickly. It's just not an opening thing. All right, so this is quite unusual. See, I don't normally play this myself. I do play the D3 Roy. You rarely play H3, but in the game, it's actually quite useful. So something to keep in mind anyway. So tucking the bishop way on C C2. Normal stuff, C5, D4. You know, I prefer the D3 structure myself, personally, because I just play around with this. Dance the knight on the king side in for F5. But, you know, the correct move is like D4. It's the, the move that all the top players play. You know, I play D3. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, we go into this variation. And the idea is still bringing the knight around, trying to play for F5 potentially. But black cuts that out with G6. Now, when I'm playing the D3, Roy, and black plays G6, I really hate that because uh, that cuts out the fun on the F5 square. But I like what Fisher does in this game. Like, he plays, if Jay brings his knight to G4 anyway and still plays for a kingside attack. So this is something I really found quite useful. So potentially playing for d5 as well. And this is what Fisher does. And thanks to h3, you can now bring the knight to h2 and go knight g4. So this is another little plan, another idea, and still try for a kingside attack. Because what I normally do when g6 comes on the board is play for d5 or play for a4 or something like that. So I like this idea. Queen f3, you know... He's playing for a kingside attack. That's what I like. Straightforward chess. Let's try for a kingside attack. If that doesn't work, we'll try something else. And why it's not really overreaching or like ramming the pawns down the board. And if that doesn't work, you're in a difficult position. The structure's still pretty solid. And why it gets a sort of free, a free try, if you like, a free attack on the king side. So I really like that idea. And yeah, this is the idea with bringing the knight onto g4. An exchange of dice. And that's what I would have played in this in this move. Exchange of knights. I'd have played this. Right, so when I'm flicking through this game earlier, I'm thinking, oh, that's the first thing. I'm going to flick through a game really quickly that like I registered on my radar because my automatic response, like I said, would have been to take back with the knight. But then uh, we see why. Instead of that, Fisher takes with the pawn, and we get the, the open H file to conduct... Uh, you know, so I attack down the h5 with the rooks. You know, we can play this move, we can play this, and after the bishops move somewhere, uh, we can bring the rook over to h1 and play the rooks down on the h file. So I think this is for myself quite instructive, actually, to not worry about this type of thing. You know, in the games, I'd be a little bit, oh, I don't want to sort of mess my pawn structure up. Like, no. And if you're playing for the king side, it's like, just go for it, right? And the pawn here is not, it's not weak anyway, right? Is actually quite useful so let's carry on with the game and this move I think was a novelty at the time or it certainly caused quite a bit of fuss in the game and uh, there are lots and lots of variations I haven't really got time to go into because I'm off to the pub uh, with Bishop takes g5 in this line right, for example I'll just show you one line d5 and then if takes here we are going to win the exchange and basically causes a load of chaos. If you want to look at this variation, you know, it is in a study. I'll put the link in the description. You can play around uh, yourself if you're interested in why this is particularly a good move. I'm not really that, that interested in this particular move myself. I'm more interested in the way Fisher switches from this king side attack to the queen side attack. So avoids the knight exchange. Our guy wants to keep the pieces on the board and he wants to checkmate his opponent. And to do that, he needs pieces. So he avoids that exchange. But this gives Fisher the bishop pair and the open H file on which to conduct an attack. And this is interesting. Uh, yeah, so the plan, obviously, g3 to go king g2 to swing the rooks over to h1. And this is given an exclam move as it shuts down the queen side for white. So there's no sort of a4, immediately a4. Uh, being played switching over we've got our attack and Fisher 
This is when you kind of, it, nothing's really happening. Like the knight's in a good place, defending this square. And, you know, the queen's sort of defending this this area. So there's not really much Fisher can do anymore on the king's side. So he decides to switch over to the queen's side. And this is really instructive. Avoids the queen trades, obviously. A4. And now we get a double tempo on the queen with this and this. Right, I really like that. Very active rook. You know, getting into the game, getting on the queen's side, getting two free tempos on the queen. Changes, but we've still got a rook on the sixth rank, which is pretty powerful. And the two bishops can spring into action. So let's carry on with the game. The game is nearly over. Like, Fisher's virtually nearly won this game already. Right, I'm amazed in these Fisher games how... You know, from seemingly nothing, Fisher just seems to conjure up an attack. It's like, it's incredible, really. So, brings the bishops in. The bishops are quite powerful in this open board position. And ready for it. Another tempo on the queen. Just improving the position. Queen d8. And then, can you find an absolutely brilliant move for white in this position? White. All right, white's out the knight. And... If we take, then this just mops up, right? And this from this position with the bishops coming into the game, like this is just going to be devastating, and that exchange is well worth it. So instead, we're already a piece down. Black just plays queen to c8 because oh, actually, is this a blunder by Fisher? He moves the rook away, and the queen's hanging. Ah. What we're going to do about that was officially about that. So another good move coming up. Again, winning move if you can find it. And it's this one. Bishop d7. Lovely, lovely move. And black resigns. Right, why does black resign? Well, because if uh, we take the bishop and then bang, discovered attack on the queen. The queen hangs. So black resigns. Right, so a really, really nice attacking game on the queen's side by Fisher there. And like I said, those tempos on the queen, for me, are quite instructive. And this idea, seeing one move further, right? So he played after takes. Black had this in mind, right? But then he didn't see this move. So it's always about calculating one move ahead. If you can do that little bit move, that extra move, you know, in the line. And I really like where Fish just switched the attack from the king's side to the queen's side and then got those tempos. All right, that's it for me. It's pub time. Goodbye.